Hello and welcome to the Tech Bytes audio cast. My name's Tim and I'm from the Open Bytes Blogazine and with me is Dr. Roy Shesterwitz from the Tech Rights website. It's Friday night and I'm gonna get sauce. I fought the troll and the troll lost. I fought the troll and the troll lost. He tried to boss me and was outbossed. I fought the troll and the troll lost. I fought the troll and the troll lost Underneath his creeper bridge Hoping goats will cross Quoting Ashcroft and Tom Ridge I fought So, the troll first of all, I want to know how big of a threat you think uh, the so-called secure vote is considered to be to the free software movement. It's, it's a disaster. Well, except that it's not secure boot. not the same. When it's under the control of the user, secure boot is a security feature. It allows the user to control what programs can run on the machine and thus prevent, uh, you might say, uh, unexpected malware from running. We have to distinguish the unexpected malware such as viruses from the expected malware such as Windows or Mac OS and Flash Player and so on, which are also malware. They have features to hurt the user, but uh, users know that they're installed. In any case, uh, when the, the what Secure Boot does is that it causes the machine to only load programs that are signed with a certain key or keys. And as long as the user controls which keys they are, then it's a security feature. However, it can be changed into a, a set of digital handcuffs it, when the user doesn't control the keys. And this is happening. Microsoft demands that ARM computers sold for Windows 8 be set up so that the user cannot change the keys. In other words, turning it into restricted boot. Now, this is not a security feature. This is abuse of the users. I think it ought to be illegal. Mm -hmm. It's a matter of control by the vendor, of course, not control by the user himself. Exactly, yeah. and that's why it's wrong. Yeah. That's why non-free software is wrong. The yeah. users deserve to have control of their computers. Yeah. I think that not only Windows is going to be an issue, in fact, if you consider the fact that even a modified kernel uh, is going to be in a position where it's perhaps not supposed, not, not seen as verified uh, for execution. Right. Um, I'm saying it, it might not only be a malicious feature in case of uh, something like Windows running on it, it's also for, let's say, for a uh, a user of the offer number operating system that's free if, if the user wants to modify the operating system, for example. The, the thing is, if the, indeed, if the user doesn't control the keys, then it's, uh, it's a kind of shackle. And that would be true no matter what system it is. After all, why is GNU slash Linux better than Windows? Uh, not just because it has a different name, right? It, the reason it's better is because it's freedom respecting free software that, that the users control. But if the machine has restricted boot and the users can't control the system, then it would be just as bad as Windows. So. If the machine will only run a particular version of GNU slash Linux, that is, uh, that's a restriction feature. And that's, you know, I haven't heard anyone doing that yet with GNU slash Linux, but that's what, uh, but Red Hat and Ubuntu are proposing to do things somewhat like that uh, for future PCs that are shipped for Windows. But it's not exactly that. And the reason is the users will 
figure out how they can install a modified and more free app version of Android. So um, the, the presence of the kernel Linux in a system doesn't guarantee it's going to be better. And I've heard someone say, although it hasn't been checked, that a particular kind of Android device is actually using an Intel chip with restricted boot. Mm -hmm. One of the concerns that I, I think is worth raising is the fact that, as far as I know, with many of the embedded devices, especially those based on ARM, uh, I believe it's not even possible to get into a boot menu to disable so-called right. security. That's where, um, that's where Microsoft is really going all out. Because Microsoft has ordered, essentially, uh, demanded that those shipping ARM devices for Windows 8 make it restricted boot with no way to get around it. Yeah. Which also means, of course, waste and all sorts of impacts to the environment in due time the hardware becomes obsolete when the operating system itself is not being used so quite so much. So, uh, and, well, it's worse than that. It means basically that those devices, you have to throw them out if you want to escape to the free world. And this, in the past, we were able to install, to, to liberate a computer by installing free software on it instead of its user restricting operating system. And this, of course, was tremendously helpful to the spread of GNU slash Linux because it meant that users could move to freedom. It would be much harder if they have to buy another computer to do so. And so it's a very damaging thing that Microsoft is doing. And uh, we need to look for every possible way to stop them or defeat what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Well, I wanted to ask you, one of my readers, uh, his name is Will, uh, he's asking if, if, you, if you've seen any new good hardware that can take core boot. I'm sorry, what? One of my readers, a guy called Will, he's asking if you've seen any good hardware that can run core boot. I don't know. Basically, I don't keep track of hardware models. I only remember their names anymore, mm -hmm. except for the one I use, which is uh, the remote Elum, and it doesn't run core boot, but it will run PMON and GRUB. It has a free BIOS. Mm -hmm. When it comes, it has a free BIOS, mm -hmm. uh, which is why I chose it. But in terms of running core boot, well, the machines where you'd run core boot are 